Hello everyone and welcome to the weird, scary and horrible parts of humanity. Today we are looking at the final United Airlines Flight 93 hijacker and indeed the final hijacker of the series, Sayed El Gumdir. United Airlines Flight 93 was a Boeing 757-222 departing Newark International Airport, New Jersey and bound for San Francisco International Airport, California. The aircraft is seen here three days before the attack on the 8th of September 2001. There were 33 passengers aboard, 4 hijackers and 7 crew members. The flight did not depart until 8.42am and was running 42 minutes late. Crashing in Shanksville, Pennsylvania and killing all 44 aboard, it is speculated that the Boeing 757's target was the Capitol building in Washington DC, but this remains debatable to this day. Syed Abd Allah Ali Sulyaman Al Gamdi was born on the 21st of September 1979 in Bal Jurashi in the Al Bahar province of Saudi Arabia. His family belonged to the Gamad tribe. The Gamad tribe is an Al Arab tribe of the Hejaz region who are predominantly Sunni and one of the oldest tribes of the Arabian Peninsula. Fellow United Airlines Flight 93 hijacker Ahmed Al Hasnawi, as well as United Airlines Flight 175 hijackers Hamza Al Gamdi and Ahmed Al Gamdi, were also part of the Gamad tribe. However, he was not related to Hamza Al Gamdi and Ahmed Al Gamdi, and he did not meet them until 1999. The group is noted as being one of the most religiously fervent of the hijackers. Indeed, Al Gamdi attended prayer services regularly. He went to university in the largest and capital city of Saudi Arabia, Riyadh, studying at the Imam Muhammad ibn Sayyid Islamic University. The Imam Muhammad ibn Sayyid Islamic University is ranked by the QS University World Rankings 2024 as between 1001 and 1200 of the world's universities. Among those who studied at the university was Abdulaziz Al Omari, an American Airlines Flight 11 hijacker. However, from there he would frequently visit the Al Qasim province in the heart of Saudi Arabia. It is speculated by the 9-11 Commission report that while there he met Sulaiman al Alwan, a theoretician of militant jihadism with a mosque in the al Qasim province, which was seen as a terrorist factory. Among his students included Abdulaziz al Omari. In October 1999, he transferred to the University of Qasim, possibly to be closer to al Alwan. There he attended the Qasim University in Boadaya. Qasim, which is ranked between 901 and 950 of the world's universities by the 2024 QS University World Rankings. While there, he would become more radicalized with the area considered the core of the ultra-conservative Wahhabi ideology. Dropping out of university, he didn't tell his family until December 1999 and told his family that he was going to travel to Chechnya to wage a violent jihad before, according to the 9-11 Commission report, cutting them off completely. He then went to Chechnya to fight in the Second Chechen War against Mavarasha, and the 9-11 Commission report does indeed confirm that he made it into Russia, as one of only two muscle hijackers who made it into Russia. The major combat phase of the Second Chechen War lasted between the 7th of August 1999 and the 30th of April 2000 in the North Caucasus with the insurgency phase lasting between the 1st of May 2000 and the 16th of April 2009 with an estimated 30,000 civilians killed and between 50 and 80,000 military personnel killed. However, he was unable to fight as the Chechen fighters were not accepting any more foreign fighters. Instead, he went to Al-Qaeda camps in Afghanistan. It is speculated that his ultimate long-term aim was to enter Chechnya, as this was during the major combat phase of the Second Chechen War and fight for the Chechen militants against Mother Russia. However, these plans were quickly derailed. He ended up at the Al Farouk training camp, which was a Taliban and Al Qaeda training camp near Kandahar, Afghanistan. There he met Ahmad Al Nami, a fellow United Airlines Flight 93 hijacker, who he would become very close to, as well as Walid Al Sharay and Wail Al Sharay, both American Airlines Flight 11 hijackers. 
The four would pledge themselves to jihadism in the spring of 2000, with the session overseen by Wail al Sharay. He also worked as a security guard at Kandahar Airport along with Walid al Sharay. Al Gamdi also became acquainted with Walid bin Atash who convinced him to become a martyr. Atash is a Yemeni citizen who is suspected of playing a key role in the early stages of 9-11 and is currently held at Guantanamo Bay. In late 2000, he travelled to Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, where he purchased traveller's checks which were paid for by Mustafa al Hawasawi. Al Hawasawi is a Saudi Arabian citizen who is alleged to have acted as a key financial facilitator for the 9 11 attacks and is currently held at Guantanamo Bay. He is alleged to have travelled frequently, including to Moldova, Bahrain, Lebanon, and Pakistan. However, the reason for his travel is unknown, although he could have crossed from Pakistan into Afghanistan to avoid having his passport stamped. Heading back to Saudi Arabia, he got a B-1, B-2 tourist visa to enter the United States of America through the US Consulate General in Jeddah, which he acquired on the 4th of September 2000 with Saudi citizens to this day, requiring a visa to travel to the United States of America. Returning to Afghanistan in late 2000, on the 23rd of December 2000, he filmed a farewell video. Unlike a lot of muscle hijackers in the video, he spoke and stated, America is the enemy that every Muslim should fight. There is no way the Arab nation can be saved except through jihad. In the video, he also read his will. On the 12th of June 2001, he applied for and received a two-year B1, B2 tourist visa, which was submitted by a local travel agency in Jeddah to the Consulate General of the United States of America in Jeddah. He received this under the Visa Express program, which was a controversial US visa program for Saudi Arabian citizens, which was discontinued in 2002 following the 9-11 attacks. On the 27th of June 2001, he arrived in the United States of America, among the last of the hijackers to arrive, along with United Airlines Flight 175 hijacker Fayez Bunny Ahmad, with the duo flying into Orlando, Florida from Dubai in the United Arab Emirates via London in the United Kingdom, with the duo flying into Orlando, Florida, Aboard Virgin Atlantic Flight VS-15, operated on a Boeing 747-200. Ironically, he was questioned by immigration authorities as they feared that he would overstay his visa. This was because he spoke little English, had no return ticket despite noting that he would remain in the United States of America for one month and was travelling for pleasure, and under where he planned to stay he simply listed hotel, with the city and state being Orlando FL on his customs declaration. Indeed, he didn't even have a hotel reservation purchased. However, he was allowed into the United States of America with deadly consequences. Travelling down to Delray Beach, Florida, he lived at apartment 1504 at the Delray Beach Racket Club condominiums, along with United Airlines Flight 93 hijacker Al Nami, with the duo moving in in June 2001. However, they did not get along with others living on the condominium, and on the 28th of August 2001, neighbour Maria Siskar Simpson reported having to let them into her apartment to retrieve a towel that had fallen off their balcony onto her balcony. The St. Petersburg Times interviewed Simpson in September 2002, and she said that both were rude and shouted at her, determined to get into her apartment and pulled at the door, trying to bully past her. However, Simpson noted that they seemed softer at previous times around the complex. While in Florida, he opened up a SunTrust bank account with a $4,500 bank deposit provided by Al Hawasawe. In July 2001, he got a two-month gym membership at the Y2 Fitness Center in Boca Raton, Florida. Towards September, he moved to 1690 Dunn Avenue in Daytona Beach. Three weeks prior to 9-11, he sent an online message to Ramzi bin al-Shibir with al-Gamdi posing as his girlfriend. Al-Shibir is a Yemeni citizen who is accused of being a key facilitator for the 9-11 attacks and is currently held in Guantanamo Bay. 
However, accusations of torture towards him by the CIA and diagnosis of post-traumatic stress disorder associated psychotic features and a delusional disorder meant that on the 22nd of September 2023, he was ruled by a judge at Guantanamo Bay as unfit to stand trial in a death penalty case. The message stated, The first semester commences in three weeks, two high schools and two universities. This summer will surely be hot. 19 certificates for private education and 4 exams. Regards to the professor, goodbye. This was a reference to two military and government targets, most likely the Capitol building and the Pentagon, two civilian targets, the two towers of the World Trade Center, 19 certificates was for 19 hijackers, and 4 exams stood for 4 planes. Al Gundy purchased his and Al Nami's tickets for United Airlines Flight 93, with the duo seated in seats 3D and 3C respectively. The tickets were purchased over the phone with United Airlines. On the 7th of September 2001, he and other United Airlines Flight 93 hijackers, Zayad Jagar, Ahmed Al Hasnawi, and Al Nami, flew from Fort Lauderdale, Florida to Newark, New Jersey aboard Spirit Airlines, with Fort Lauderdale remaining one of the largest bases for Spirit Airlines. Along with the other United 93 hijackers, he checked into the Marriott Hotel at Newark Airport, where he stayed for two nights on the 7th of September until the 9th of September before moving to the Newark Days Inn Wilmington. Both hotels remain open to this day. On the 11th of September 2001, he checked in through United Airlines at 7.03am. With United Airlines Flight 93 departing from Gate A17, he boarded at 7.40am along with Al Namir. However, the flight was delayed for 42 minutes, meaning that Flight United 93 took off at 8.42 a.m. just four minutes before American Airlines Flight 11 crashed into the North Tower of the World Trade Center, with the pilots and cabin crew of United Airlines Flight 93 informed of this as well as the hijacking of United Airlines Flight 175. At 9.28 a.m., United Airlines Flight 93 was hijacked. However, from the black box it is known that Jagar was flying the Boeing 757 and it is suggested that three hijackers were inside the cockpit. Jagar was heard calling Sayed twice, indicating that Al Gumdi went inside the cockpit at least twice. Who the third hijacker was is unknown to this day. However, passengers and crew were able to make various calls and became aware that two planes had hit the World Trade Center as well as one plane hitting the Pentagon. And they became aware that the hijackers would indeed be utilizing the Boeing 757 as a weapon. This led passengers and cabin crew to attempt to overrun the hijackers and while it is known that they made it to the cockpit door based on a trolley bashing into the cockpit door, to this day we don't know how far they made it with Zayad Jagar crashing the Boeing 757 deliberately at 10.03 a.m. and 11 seconds into a field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania which killed all on board. On the 12th of September 2003, the martyrdom video featuring Al Gamdi was released. It was aired on Al Jazeera. The beginning of the video featured a tribute to him by Osama bin Laden. And that was the final 9-11 hijacker. And thank you all so much to all of you who have been around for these 18 videos analysing the 19 hijackers of 9-11, which we first started in June last year. Your support and enthusiasm for learning more about these 19 cowards and what drove them to participate in an event that would change the face of a planet forever and leave nearly 3,000 dead is truly, truly appreciated. And without you all and your encouragement, I wouldn't have made it to the end. And if you were here just for the 9-11 hijackers and won't see any additional videos, I still appreciate you all and don't forget that you are loved. Until next time, stay awesome, stay classy, be kind to everyone you meet, have an amazing day, and remember the truth is always more interesting than fuction.